So we'll bring up accounts. Bring up Woody. You know mm -hmm. what I am. Okay, connect, same dive. So his results. Jenny. What? Wait, wait a minute. So I packed all my stuff, I show up at 7 a.m. the next day, and we just start driving south to Florida. The weird part is that during the drive, he refused to tell me what we were doing. So I had to wait five hours until we got to Jenny Springs, and then this happened. All right, so here we are, Jenny Springs. I still have no idea what we're doing here. You'll find out. It's That's a big self-realization. And I, I did I let's not I didn't want to break it to you on the drive. Mm. But well, don't tell me yet because Doug is here. Yep. And okay. we're going to go through the planning. It's gonna be hard. Because I tell you, buddy. Don't it's gonna be tough for you. But it'll get it'll be hard. Anyway, a lot of you guys have been asking what is it that we do when it comes to planning a cave dive. So we got Doug here and Woody and myself are gonna go cave diving so we want to walk you through the way it works so if you don't want to see this whole thing about looking at a map and trying to plan a dive you can just fast forward to learn what big revelation he has but uh it's gonna be hard for you that's a bit, but. okay so game plan for today because i know woody wants a, a good uh stress right nitrogen loading stress to kind of see how the physiology well, is going to work that's here. part of what I'm going to explain to both of you after this. Okay, because all I know is you said you want to do a kind of a long dive. I do want to do a long dive, but I don't think that happens to me. But go ahead. Okay, okay. so this is the two entrances. As you guys know, I'll say this for the, uh, for the dive uh, talk audience. There's the devil's eye and the devil's ear. Uh, the devil's eye is uh, the shallow area, comes at like 20 feet. The ear is the one in the river. What we're going to do is we're going to enter the ear. We're going to go through the area here, then you go through what's called the gallery. Uh, through here, you guys remember that. Here's where it goes from being narrow and tall to flat and uh, and low, that's the lips. We'll go through the lips, and they'll go through the keyhole. The keyhole, as you remember, is that little opening, kind of go in that's about six feet, drops down about Beautiful. 85 feet here. Go through the cornflakes, kind of work our way around. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, when we get to this area, we're going to go ahead and tie a line into the bone room line so we have that, but not use it. Okay? okay. You would use that on the way out. And then we're going to come up the gold line to the Hill 400 line, which is right here. This will take us all the way around, if you remember, all the way around here to the bats. You love the bats. Okay. Your spear down, uh, if not the octopus. Okay, and then we're going to take from here, we'll take the beetle tunnel to the Hillier tunnel, which takes us all the way around to here. Then we're going to go up to the dome room, spin around the dome room, come back, go up here. Here's Stage Bottle Rock, which is right here. Next to that is what's called the River Intrusion Tunnel, which is this area here. So we're actually going to tie in a jump here, come around, and then we either can jump over the line here or come back around. And then go up a little bit, one more area here. And at about this area, this continues on the map, we'll dump another jump in here, and that's going to take us up to the uh, insulation room. Remember we did that one time before, where there's kind of like insulation on the floor, a little whalebone on the wall and stuff. And how many feet back? That'll like be just about, just about 2,000 feet back. Okay. Yeah. About 2,000 feet back. We'll come back out, pick up our jumps, come back, come around, pick up our jump, pick up jumps, work our way around. When we get to the maple leaf, which is right here. So as we're coming back, we get to the maple leaf. We'll decide, we've already got a jump in here. If we're doing well and we want to come across, we will go across to the bone room line. Now at that point, we have a, a continuous line all the way to the exit. If we're having any kind of issues, we'll just stay on the gold line and come straight out. Awesome. Sound good? That should probably That's be great. two and a half hours. Yes. Two and a half hour dive. Beautiful. Pretty awesome. Nice. Sound good? Can't wait. All right. Okay, so this is the O-Dive system. I'll show you here in just a second. The idea here is we know that decompression illness is a rare event, recreational diving. It's a more common occurrence in technical diving. 
Uh, so people have used different models, different gradient factors as kind of a way to try and pad their safety margins. So this is a system to kind of allow you to personalize your decompression. Uh, it's not on the fly. You get data and then can use it for your next dive and, and forward and so forth. So the idea is we know that two people, let's say you and Gus go diving, and Gus gets bent, you don't get bent, and what? it's the normal. same, That's and it's exactly the same profile. It's normal. Okay, so the normal question dive. would be, okay, why did this happen? Or let's say that Gus has done this same cave dive a hundred times, and then all of a sudden today gets bent but never got bent before. I see that in my practice all the time, and people say, how did this happen? I did the same profile as so-and-so, I was hydrated, mm. I must have a PFO, they get checked, they don't have a PFO. So it must be something about their physiology. So what this product allows you to do is look at your individual physiology uh, and see how you can change your dive planning um, with gas mixes, with um, gradient factors and so forth to try and be safer on your next dive. That's cool. So we we actually talked about this on the Talk with Joe Dutour, which I'm going to link here on the corner uh, above, where he said that the future of dive computers and diving is more of a personalized model for decompression. So exactly. this is kind of like the first attempt, at I guess, at, at achieving And that. That's cool. recently at DEMA, Shearwater said this is where they're headed. This is the next level of dive computers is Personal. reading what's going on with your body and changing even ultimately they're hoping someday on the fly. I right. realize this isn't that way now. By the way, now that you mentioned Dima, if you haven't watched the Dima video, go check it out. But on the Dima video, there's actually a tiny piece of our visit with Shearwater at the Shearwater booth. However, members got access to the whole visit with Shearwater. So if you haven't become a member, go ahead and hit the join button because there's a ton of videos that are members only. So I just wanted to Check that out. All right, so let's talk about O-Dive. Okay, so this is the O-Dive system. So it comes with this little hockey puck looking thing. Ooh. Okay, that's the actual sensor. All right. This has got indentation because it's gonna fit on your clavicle, your collarbone. Oh. So after the dive, what you're gonna do, the shirt off obviously, is put this just under the clavicle and kind of look for a signal. It's all done with an app on your phone. So and you and open how, it how fast after the dive Very you good really question. gotta get into that. So the idea is with, with a nitrox mix, Okay, so which is what we're going to be diving today. We're not doing any helium. So the nitrox mix, you want to check it 30 minutes and it's 60 minutes after coming out of the water. Oh, okay. Okay. With, with helium, you'd want to do it as quickly as you safely could do it. When you get out of the water safely, get your gear put away safely and then get to it. So about 30 minutes after we get out, we're going to want to take measurements. You take measurements from both subclavian veins. So you're going to take, it's about 30 seconds kind of in this location, followed by 30 seconds kind of in this location. It's on an app on your phone, so you can see what kind of signal you're getting, so you can do some quality, you know, some quality control. You're going to be breathing slow and easy, and we'll show the pictures when we get it, but you'll get some yellows and some oranges, which are kind of showing nice respiratory variation that you've got a good signal. What, the, what this does is it then downloads all of that data um, onto the app. You then compare it up to your Shearwater computer. It does some other computers, but it works really easily with Shearwater. And that way you have all of your dive profile, you know, minute by minute, gas mixes, all that sort of thing. And it literally sends an email as soon as you have access. If we're at Jenny and we don't have good cell signal, as soon as we get back into dinner, we can hit it and send it off. Uh, and within about 10 or 15 minutes, you get a report back uh, onto your phone. And you can open up that dive and see kind of how it looks. And what it'll do is it gives you a score. And you're, this is, I tell people, this is like bowling, not like golf. So you're trying to get high scores. Oh. And it's out of, a, out of a total score of 100. So it's got a bubble score of 40 points. So you can get anywhere from zero to 40 points on your on bubbling. And then it's also got a uh, kind of a risk factor of how risky your dive was based on gradient factors, gas mix, what your profile looked like and so forth. And you'll lose points for those things. So if you bubble a lot, so you'd have say a score of 20 or 30 or 30 or 40, that's bad. Uh, and your number would immediately drop to 60 or 70. What's, and then, the, what, what, what's zero bubbling number? What are, well, you'd get. No, I'm just wondering what yeah. the number is. I'm just asking a okay. quick question. That's a good question. Wondering so, if you had no that. bubbles, you would not lose any points from that. That's like not a thing, though. No, That's but like a fish, for example, but just they don't in theory. Nitrox. No, That's but let's say a fish. Oh, had so, if you, on, so if you had no bubbles. bubbles, if you had no bubbles at all, then you would get zero, zero subtracted from your total of 100 from that aspect. And you should be studied by science, right? Because nobody gets zero bubbles, right? And then the, the second part is the, your so profile. I have well. Right. So okay. if, you're, if, you're, if your profile was a very aggressive profile, you could lose some points there. And then once we have the data, what we'll do is we'll look at our data 
uh, and then we'll make adjustments to try to make things safer. And then tomorrow we'll do basically the same dive again, or very similar dive, and see if our scores look better. That's all cool. The only, only follow-up question is if I had it, somebody, like if I had a zero, I could, in theory, just to help explain this, you could stay down there forever like a fish. If you could possibly. If, if I don't could. think that's. That but if you could. Right. I'll, I'll, I don't think for a human that's possible. Huh. Why, is, why are we here? Right, listen, like, I don't, yeah, all I know is Woody told, what he told to me to bring this thing. We're going to go diving in to bring this thing. So I had a self-realization. This is Gus why I called you really fast. I want to tell you what's going on. I wanted to do this because I know that I communicate with fish, and no. I know why. If no. I don't bubble. No. I realized that the noise of the bubbling even inside of me, they don't feel, they think I'm a fish. And I think more towards octopus. No. So no. I don't think when I put this on me, we're gonna see any bubbling. And that's no. what I was here to prove to you guys. That's I finally realized, why is it that I can have this bond? Now we're gonna be able so to prove it. Now, that's what I'm so excited about. So now when about. we show you have lots of bubbles, what is that gonna mean? I don't want you to be scared of me. I'm not, I, After I is, show you this, it's okay, I'm something different. So no, it's okay for us that. to be that's all an I inferior wanted. species to Not you. Not inferior. Different. different. I can't help it. What I am, I am. Moment of truth, last night, after the long dive that we did, we used the O-Dive device to measure bubbles, and we sent our results. They apparently go to France, and then some super smart server, computer, and team of people evaluate the results, and then they send us back and tell us how we did. Yep. In terms of bubbles and risk and all of that. So, I've been waiting all night. <laughs> We're gonna see the results live because this one thinks he doesn't bubble. Well, even though it's proven that everyone, everyone bubbles after every dive, no matter what, every he somehow thinks every, single yeah, dive. every human bubbles after every single dive. I know that's, what I that's am. That's a fact. I know what I am. Okay, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, I got the email. Yeah. Okay. So Doug's gonna review it. Yep. Here we go. Is all oh. systems O dive results available? Awesome. <laughs> so we uh, like we talked about we put them all on my phone last night because yeah. I had the uh, thing. So let me bring up the uh, the, app. the O dive app. Mm -hmm. okay, o dive app. Okay, here's my name. Here's me. So my results. So here's the Jenny dive from yesterday. Okay. So if you guys can see that, this is supposed to be out of a possible score of 100. So you'll see my score was 70. That's not great. Um, 20 of the of that drop from 100 was because of the actual profile of the dive so what gas misses we had um, and set points and all that sort of thing gradient factors so we could tweak things i'll show you that in a second we could tweak that to make that look better so the dark blue that says 10 that's like that's bubbles, bubbles right right the so top the bubble the score is from 0 to 40 40 right. being the worst amount of bubbles 10 is like 25%. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have bubbles right. like every year. Who expects that? Right. So I got a, a severity of 20, a bubble score of 10. Just for grins, you can see if we'd added more deco. 
those numbers get much better. The safety, yep. Right, so okay. we'd have extra deco, or if we put some helium in our mix, okay, we start all of a sudden start getting much, much better as well. So we may want to do that for mine. I may need to do that for mine. Yeah. But let me see what you did look like. So oh, let's yeah. go to, let's look at Ooh. Gus. So you got 70 out of 100. I got 100. a 70 out of 100. All right. So, so by the way, go, higher scores means right. better. Right. So now let's go all to right. Gus. We'll connect to Gus. Gus's results. Right, Gus got a 69. Okay. So pretty much the same thing. Not bad. The 21, I had a 20 on the severity of cool the number. of the dive. That was again, it was about a hundred foot dive for 95 or hundred minutes. So, you know, we had a, it was a lot of deco. Cool number. Yeah, cool number. Got. So he got that's, the, and that's, then. That's, what are you? That's a cool number. I just think that's neat that oh you got, God. you know, God. one less than the instructor. So, okay. This is serious, serious yeah. business. All right. right. Well, you got a 69. So. And you got, again, a bubble score of 10. So you and okay. I are bubbling about the same. So of course. Yeah. We got 10 bubble scores. And just like before, we could tweak things like our uh, additional safety stops and changed mixes just for grins. So we pulled 30% To increase helium. the safety margin. Maybe yeah. today you want 69 again. I mean, try That's, to get a different number. Don't try stop to do it. something different. That's... So like if you pulled up your Trimix to 30% helium, your score jumps on 89. Nice. And we know... And, it, is, and that is four times safer. I don't know if you can see That's four times it. safer. Yep. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's, that's awesome. So we, so may we just have to add helium. So we just want to add the helium. Awesome. So I'm assuming and that was a 95 minute dive yesterday that we did. Right. At about 100 feet. 100 feet. <laughs> max yeah. by, max 100 feet. Yeah. So Woody should be about the same. So we'll bring up accounts. Bring up Woody. You mm -hmm. know what I am. Okay, connect. Same dive. So his results. Jenny. What? Wait, wait a minute. He yeah, any bubbles. Okay, he's got the same 21 severity index that you and I had, what the? but he has no bubbles. That's possible. No, know what I am. I no. told you guys. No, that can't no. be right. I don't <laughs> bubble. I knew it. That can't be right. That's amazing. I told you. <laughs> that That's why right. in the cave, remember the fish I brought over to you? That's... I am emerging. All right, become, hold on. I'm not, I'm coming out. Wait, 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 wait. I don't you, bubble. Let's pull that up again. Which I wait, told. Wait, wait, wait. I know. Okay, here we go. And I, I knew you were so going to be like this. this. I knew you were going to be like this. Out of scared. zero to 40. That, no, maybe. Zero. I, I told I, you that's no. right. This is zero awesome. to 40, he's got zero bubbles. I I told you. No, I read that wrong. I, no, you. The device, I probably I, measure you're wrong. I think you should understand that's, what I am. I knew what I am, and you didn't want to say what I was. People are going to think this is made up or photoshopped. This is not Doc, photoshopped. It's the <laughs> instructor in this class. Is there anything made up right here? No. I know what I am. I've, I'm coming out to everybody. I'm not, I've never been a regular human. I, I, would, I oh my bond God. in a special mental, I feel the mental attachment with fish, with octopus, with everything in the marine life. I do, because I don't That's... bubble, they don't bubble, we don't bubble. I know what I am. All right, so we're following the recommendations from Odai. As you can see, we're bleeding tanks right now. And they're getting a little cold. Yeah, look at this. Totally frozen solid. Both my tanks have been blessed. Thing is still frozen solid. Now an air conditioner works. What? This is how the concept of an air conditioner works right here. Compressor. I don't, I don't think that's how. Yeah. This is no, how it does. How it works. Air conditioner. Reaction. That's how they figured out how to I make don't... your house. What? what are you doing? Charles is principal. Very like fake news. High pressure going to low it's pressure. It's like this is how ACs work. What? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, work. that's not how it works. Oh yeah, it is. Oh my god. I think if you're an octopus, that's how an oh. air conditioner works. This is. See, this is. I am what I am. I do I, now, now. I am what I am. Anyway, so we are uh, bleeding tanks. My tanks are completely bled now. We're gonna fill them up with 30-30. So 30% oxygen, 30% helium, per the recommendation from Odive to make our dive safer. All right, let's see if we can see if we can take this one off. Oh, I'm <laughs> sticking to it. Whoa, look at that! Frozen solid. I have to keep moving it, or else my hand sticks to it. Whoa! All right, I don't want to stick it to the wetsuit. I don't know where to put. Oh, here. 
All right. And this one is not as frozen. Put it side by side. There it is. That's what you use to bleed a tank so it's not super noisy like Dave Country Dive Shop. 30 30 made a big difference to me. And it, it's, you can tell too, it's a lot sharper and cleaner. Like you can process things quicker. And uh -huh. Your mind is definitely sharper. Than 30 30 for sure. Bye. Awesome. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. All right, so we're getting fills. And then we'll be out of here. All right, so in order to know what uh, gas is in the tank, we're gonna use an analyzer. It's like this, right? Plug it in. So the number on top is oxygen, so you can see, and helium in the bottom. We didn't calibrate it ahead of time, but. All right, so it seems to be evening out. A 30% O2, 28% helium. So 30, 28 will be the mix. All right, we're out of Cape Country Dive Shop. <coughs> How you feeling? Time to execute the dive. You need coffee, it looks like. You look like... I do need coffee, but um, <coughs> the thing is, we went and we got this 30-30 and all that, but that's for people that bubble. That's... I'm not gonna... Which no. I showed you guys. That's... Don't, don't follow me. Remember what I showed Stop you? Stop it. Uh, just in case you were curious, how much is to fill two low-pressure 50s which Doug is loading into the car. Thank you so much, Doug. Uh, with 30.30, it was $58.12. So 58 bucks for two full LP50s of 30.30. So helium. And, and your uh, oxygen. Yep. You wanna get your uh, shoes off the roof? 30% oxygen, 30% helium. All right, hold on. Which means 40% nitrogen. Let's throw the shoes in there. We're good to go. Yo, let's do it. So we just had our 111 minute dive here at Jenny. Time nice. to measure some bubbles because everyone bubbles, as we know. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna use the O-Dive app. Just, I don't bubble. We're going to, yeah, no, you do. Everyone bubbles. I am what All I right, am. so we're gonna say, okay. I told you. We're gonna connect the sensor, join the network. Okay, here we go. Start the first measurement. All right, so we have to add lube. To this part right here, the circle, we're gonna film that. So we add some of this loop. I don't need loop. Provide it, stop it. Provide it from the company, we'll see how that goes. I don't need loop. Stop. And then we go, wait, is never need loop. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, hold on. Continue. And we're gonna do the left one first. That was the left one. No, you don't. Okay, so listen, do not talk. Just read this, Woody. Okay. Breathe out deeply. All right. Do not talk. All right, I won't talk. All right. Is it? I said it was the other one. I'm not going to talk. Right. But I told you, I don't need lube and I don't right, bubble. I know it. what I am. Stop it. Just 20 seconds, okay. if you can, do not talk. All right. I'm, can I say one thing? No, just stop. We're, all right, we're starting. Don't talk. Just breathe in. Breathe out. Octopus. This is not going to work on Dude, me. We, no, we well, have I'm to. Just saying, right. just I know. Spell, I, no, no, no. What, what, what happened? You're not. You can't talk. We're, Either way, I'm not. We have okay. to start over. We have oh. to start over. Let me. All right. So look, we have to lube it again. Which I don't know why. We're gonna, I've never used in my life. We're, what does that even mean? Don't. I'm an octopus and I will not bubble. That will not bubble. 
I know I told you guys before what I am, and now once again, All right, so you this, won't get any bubbles. Out so of this me. is the right shoulder. This head. All right, <clears throat> that that's this one. Okay. All right. Don't. Don't. All right. So don't talk for 20 seconds. All right. That's it. Excellent sensor positioning. Well done. All right. Let's submit that measurement. And that's it. All right, so I just came out here because dog just got the results from the second dive. And uh, I came to get the camera so we can, we can go over these results. All right, so we got the results from dive number two. Yep, I just got the Let's email. Open it up. Okay, so let me open up the, uh, the O-Dive app here. I'll do mine first, and then I'll do you guys. How's that sound? Let's okay. talk about expectations, though, first. Okay. Like, so, as you saw earlier on the video, we got Trimix this time around, 30-30. So that means that our risk should be lower. Right. I expect that. And of course, because the dive was equally long, actually, this one was a little bit longer than the one from yesterday, my number of bubbles should be about the same. Right. Because it was the same. It's just the risk decreases. So you, we should see... Uh, higher number from my perspective that's right. what i saw it was 100 feet for 109 minutes right do you want my expectations or am i allowed well, to say mine you can say yours okay what are your expectations jesus i don't i don't bubble i'm not i'm not the same as you i'm not well, that's, human i have i i'm yeah i know octopus we know we know i, you, we know I, I feel think. like i relate to an i am part octopus everyone I, knows what you expect but this is reality, so let's just keep it to that. Right. I you work hard because you were hauling tanks right. and you were doing stuff, so you probably expect. I expect on uh, mine with same profile as you. We all changed our uh, our uh, mixes to 30/30, yeah. so I'd expect that our severity index for all three of us should have dropped down lower. Okay. Right. I would expect bubble grades for you to be the same probably as yesterday because yeah. you weren't working very hard. Yeah. Woody, I'm assuming, was a fluke yesterday with no bubbles because humans, he should bubble. 110-minute right. dive, he should at least have some I bubbles. I know what I am. But anyway, and then from my standpoint, I was hauling the camera and fighting the current trying to get you guys on video, so my suspicion is that my severity index will be lower, but my bubbles will probably be maybe a little higher. So right. we'll find out. Because so. when you work hard, you bubble more. That's why they tell you you need to relax and chill when you're scuba diving. It's like a super chill activity. If you work hard, you bubble more. Well, you just, you basically, you're gonna, when you work hard, you're gonna intake more nitrogen. That's so right. when you have to off gas that nitrogen, you're probably more likely to bubble. All right. So check here's out the Odive app. Okay, so we got mine up first. So we'll go right to results because we just got the email. So this is Ginny to the Hinkle. That was today. And as expected, mine got worse. So my severity index was 11, which is down from yesterday, as we'd expect, because we went to 30 30. But my bubbles that were like, I forgot, like 10 yesterday, yeah. uh, went up to 29. Like so wow. So that's that means that's not good. So that tells me that chill. from my standpoint, working hard, uh, if I'm working hard on a dive, I'm bubbling more. So I'm going to need to spend more time in the water, be more conservative, maybe take a longer safety stop, or, you know, longer time at shallow at the end. Yeah. All right, so that's me. So I didn't, I didn't work hard at all in this dive, so just like yesterday. So. Hopefully the numbers. Yeah. So hopefully yours should be about the same. Yeah. Uh, actually, your bubbling should be about the same. Hopefully your severity will be down because we changed the gas. Primex. Yeah. Exactly. So let me switch over to you. So Gus, connect your results. Okay. So see what's coming up on yours. Okay. Here's your dive today. All right. Do you remember what your numbers were yesterday? Uh, I got a 69. Oh, it was from yesterday's dive, but it was this morning when we recorded. Yeah, 69 with 10 score on bubbles. bubbles. Okay. Well, you as expected. Your score got better. You went to 75. Oh, nice. Your bubbles stayed the same, right at 10. And the uh, severity index dropped to 15. All right, so yesterday so, my severity index was 21. So, so it, it dropped came down six. to 15. Yeah. And six. if we remember from before, if you go change by 33%, you get your dive is 10 times safer. Yeah. Right? So big time. we dropped about six or so one yeah. fifth. So probably two or a couple times strong, probably at least a. Uh, Two times safer dive or so compared to yesterday That's for awesome. you. That's awesome. All right, good. Okay, now let's prove that Woody actually bubbles. That had to be a fluke I, yesterday. I, I mean, so I, I feel we'll go bad, on to, but I, I, I'm not. I'm gonna let me switch over to Woody. Here's Woody's dive. I'm what I am. Okay, so Woody's connecting here. See. I'll go to no Woody's believe, results. I know no one believes me. From dive today, 11:29:21. I haven't seen this, but it won't be any 
Bubbles. You're going to hate this, Gus. What? You're going to hate this. I told you. What do you mean? Remember yesterday, he had like a, whatever it was, like a 21 or something with no bubbles? Yeah. So today we dove Trimix. So his 21 dropped to 12. Yeah. And his bubbles that were zero, mm -hmm. what? they're still zero. What? I don't know but why. That, how can you? I don't know. No, no, no. Wait, that am, can't be right. Why can't I be me? Why can't I be me? I am what I am. I'm allowed. I. Apparently. It's okay. We, apparently, what he doesn't bubble. We're changing. I'm changing. You can, but that's, it's physics, like no, every human bubbles. I'm not, that's not, I've told you not to be scared, remember? At the start of this the other day, I don't want you to be, I am what I am. That's why I talk that's to not. fish, that's why I relate with octopus. You don't talk to fish. You don't, and that's why. You talk at fish. They all they come don't talk to me, back. they always, come, I don't bubble, they're not afraid of me. They don't feel my bubbles because I don't have bubbles. And I don't know, I'm sorry I dive, but I don't have bubbles. And we can do, it doesn't matter what, how many times I, you do it, I told you guys, I feel, is, is this a, okay, the, Alex, we, we have, okay they, they're not gonna believe us, so ask Doug, is, no, we're not. did we do this legitimately? Doug, Doug is an instructor on the O-Dive, but we need to escalate. I think it's time we talk to Brandon, who's the US representative for O-Dive. Yep. Like I, we need to get to the bo bottom of this. Like whoever owns O-Dive, whoever invented it, we gotta talk to this guy. I don't need to, but you can. You and I need to. Yeah, we gotta talk to Brandon. So Brandon, welcome to the show. We have questions and we have no answers. Actually, let me rephrase that. We have some answers, but they're irrelevant because well, they're from Woody. I, but yeah. I know exactly what the answers are. Okay, but before I start asking all these questions because I'm <laughs> kind of having a, a hard time understanding what's happening. One quick thing. That's don't just, don't hint, show. Hint. What's Do you see this? He, he's showing. No, don't don't show the shirt. Oh, like people okay. don't well, remember that. Everybody just remember what I'm wearing right. right now. Go ahead. So, Brandon, before we get started with the questions, what do you do? Who are you connected to Odive, which is the device we've been using this whole time? Yeah. So my name is Brandon Walters. I'm a uh, course. Let's go, Brandon. Am I allowed? <laughs> that's don't let that's not Brandon. That's, you're no, pushing, I'm welcoming him into you're, the show. You're pushing the boundaries on that. I, I get back at all those posts. Um, but anyway, funny. I don't Brandon even know what they're talking about. Okay, go ahead. Um, I am a uh, course director and technical examiner, um, predominantly teaching through Maui and INTD. Um, I'm also one of the importers dealers of the Odive uh, self-use Doppler imaging system. Um, so I've been using that for quite a few months here since we. I was actually one of the first ones to get it here in the United States. So we've been uh, doing that as well as. A, uh, Dr. Ebersol, which you guys were meeting with as well, too. So I hope we're here to answer some questions and help you guys figure this thing out. Absolutely. And we've been hearing about this. We, we've talked to uh, Jody Turi. We've talked to other people that said the future is by having this like personalized right gradient factors and kind of profiling when it comes to decompression. How long has Odive been out or maybe even trying to figure this out with a new uh, technology? Um, I mean, the, the device uses hundreds and hundreds of thousands of previous dives um, from recreational, commercial, um, in the European markets and stuff like that. The device is actually uh, designed, manufactured in the software algorithm. So when you take that reading like you guys just did with uh, Dr. Ebersol, the results are actually sent to France, put through a computer there, and then sent back to you. Um, so they've been using it for a number of years over there and having phenomenal results. Um, and it's now working its way after some, uh, we, I had to help get them some uh, FCC approval and that kind of stuff here for the United States. But once we got that going, now we're going to see it developing here and hopefully a lot of people to more customize their algorithms. And so we don't get the posts on Facebook where it's, what gradient factor are you using? You know, well, now we can actually hopefully find one that's going to be optimized for you physiology wise. Well, Oh, cool. That, that's a great explanation. Um, I have I just have a bunch of questions that are jumbling around in my head. So let me start with this one. How do we know or what have you done briefly to assure that when we take a reading, because this is very important that we take a proper reading, that when that device, this is how it works, everybody, we take a reading underneath what this is a clavicle bone right 
right underneath there. Once you get it in the right spot, you take a reading for a certain amount of time and you can see a little chart scrolling by. And when the colors start going or whatever, we assume that means it's getting a good reading. And then it gives you an indication at the end whether or not that was a good reading. That's kind of briefly how it works. Right. How do we know? that that was in fact a good reading and not us moving it around or that it was reading something else other than what it was supposed to be reading. How did you go about so, doing that? There's a couple ways, a couple safety checks, however you want to look at that. Number one, the first one being you're trained for the proper positioning, because like you said, we're, we're putting it underneath the clavicle, looking for the subclavian vein. Um, we should only have bubbles on the venous side. So we're looking at the, for the, the subclavian vein. The artery, we hopefully shouldn't have any bubbles, number one. Number two, it's so loud from the turbulence of the heart and the blood pressure and everything else that it really doesn't give good reading. So we're looking for the subclavian vein. When we get that subclavian vein, we get a good uh, reading on that. And then what the machine's doing or the software is doing is it's then taking that sound and it's listening and putting it through algorithms and it's saying, okay, I heard a heartbeat and I heard bubbles and I heard um, breathing. So that's, that would be an excellent reading. And if I only heard um, heartbeat and breathing, then that would be a very good reading or, or whatever. And it's going to adjust that reading and give you it there. The final um, safeguard or safe check is, is once the um, reading has been taken and let's say the next day for the next business day in France, they actually do quality assurance controls and they go back and they, listen to them and can adjust the reading after the fact, if need be, if for some reason they need to teach the, the, the software that this is a boat engine sound, or this is Woody talking or whatever, what you shouldn't be doing, you, you know, it's going to be, it, they're going to be able to teach the system. So the more we use the device, the smarter the device gets or the software gets. And, and also, again, it comes down to proper placement on there because anatomically we're all fairly similar. So when we have that sensor placement, we should see a nice rise and fall from the heartbeat from breathing, as well as if we hear any bubbles from that zero to 40 range that they use. But right. OK, but right now you feel confident that if, in fact, it says it got a good reading. Do you feel confident that that is something that we can rely upon at this stage of the device? Yeah, if you said it was, it was a very good reading. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a good, good stage there or a good point to uh um, so you probably have a pretty, pretty good reading on there. Okay. Cause that's really important because yeah, because we're going to start relying upon that to then possibly take recommendations of it. And what are those recommendations that then the device is going to give? Now, remember, I want you right now to be talking on a big picture, not necessarily just to technical divers that are in the understanding. You're going to have many, many people, even even I'm still trying to understand it all that are that are going to need to understand what is this device giving us that, frankly, when we go out and die, we could just set our computers to something and be fine. What exactly information is it giving us on a big picture basis? Yeah. So on a big picture basis, it's basically going to give you an overall view of your dive. And it gives you as you guys, I don't know if you guys have showed the screens or whatever to the viewers yet, but it gives you a basically two numbers. Um, it gives you a severity factor, which would just be, you know, takes in consideration ascent rates and different things along those lines, gas mixes that you may be using nitrox or air or whatever. And then it's going to give you a bubble if it detects bubbles. And again, anything from 20 microns and above, it can usually detect. So it's going to give you from zero to 40 um, a, a range of bubbles that it detects. It's not so much it detected 40 bubbles. It's a um, algorithmic uh, result. And then from and there... Just yeah, and just to make sure, every human bubbles, right? Just to to an extent, yes. Mm -hmm. And you, we need to be able, to and we need to be able to bubble in order to properly off gas. If you don't bubble, you're not getting rid of the gas in your system. And just like with a diet coke and the Mentos kind of thing, <laughs> those little micronuclei cause some problems. Right. So I, again, every single human being, because it, it was in the learning material, if you're of the human species from planet Earth, if you happen to be that then you will bubble. And the reason you bubble is very brief explanation is when you go down underwater, the nitrogen for lack of a better word is compressing into solution into various different tissues. And then when you come out, bubbles expand as you go up and it comes out of solution yep. for people that are earth breathing 
human creatures and actually other earth creatures would bubble human as well creatures, right I mean. that's that's what we're talking about here that's yeah. what you're trying to detect Dolphins, and the whales, I, mammals yeah we're detecting basically this like when you open a soda bottle in your body yep mm -hmm. okay and the more you and the more you're bubbling this device is saying look you're bubbling too much so i want you to change various things what are those things that it would then tell you to change as a diver? From a very basic rate, it's going yes. to be able to, um, it's going to, you know, maybe have you do a little bit longer of a safety stop. Um, an extra few minutes at a safety stop could prevent you from having bubbles at the surface. It could also reduce the number of bubbles. Um, it could also change if you're a nitrox diver. Okay, if you're using this as a nitrox diver, upping your nitrox percent to maximize uh, the, the depth that you are at, you know, for that partial pressure of 1.4 at your, for your bottom to provide the best chance for you to uh, off gas efficiently as well too. And that's actually what I found that that was, you know, the, the most useful for me visually, at least is that I know that if I do a shallower dive, it will be safer. I know that if I breathe nitrox is safer, you know, those things, if I do a longer stop, it will be safer. But how long is the stop? Like, it, it, do I have to make an hour stop? Um, that's why I really like the app because on the app, you can change those values. You can say, well, what if I did a five minute stop longer, five, five more minutes or 10 more minutes? And you can see the safety or the severity, I, I guess, as you said, reduce, right? The safety goes up based on these values and you can tweak them. If I did Nitrox 32 instead of 30, and a five minute stop Like you can tweak these things. And the app in real time is telling you, this is how many, you know, how much your safety increases based on making those adjustments. So I like that part. Yeah. And then the best thing to do is be, you know, use that again on a subsequent dive to confirm and see how that's going. And eventually you'll get to a quote unquote optimized dive for that profile. So, you know, that's the, the beauty of it is it's no more of, the instructor saying, well, I do this. So therefore you do that. We can help it to customize to your body. And some people just naturally form more bubbles than others. Some people naturally uh, have less bubbles than others. So this kind of depends on their physics and physiology of their body. Right. But no, no people, no human would have no bubbles. Right. So now continuing on this line of questioning, if, how, how do I word this question? We already know that if I make a longer stop, I would bubble less. If I have a different mixture of nitrox, it could be better for me. On the other hand, it could be worse for me, right? There's a counterbalance, CNS oxygen toxicity issues versus bubbling. If I add helium, helium bubbles, but it off gases quicker. So we already know all of these things before ODIVE. What, what is it adding? Because it, what is it doing different? If, In other words, if I tweak, like Gus said, my algorithm on the, on the app. If I change it and Gus is over there changing his at the same time, it seems like it's basically coming up with almost the exact conclusion that if you guys would have done this and then done this, you both would be significantly better off. And those changes don't seem to be so different. So what I'm getting at is how do I know that it's truly customizing it for me. And it's not just saying for every diver out there, you're all better off if you do this and that, irregardless of how many bubbles it showed that I had. So, you know, at the, at the recreational level or shallower non-technical dives, there's only so many factors we can change. Yes, there you we know, go. Ch changing a gradient factor doesn't do a whole lot for a recreational diver. You know, I, I see recreational divers all the time going, why change my gradient factor? But if you're not hitting decompression or hitting very little decompression in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to see a huge variance in that, in that changes. So there's only so many things we can change on you. I mean, we can't go in and, and, and change your physiology, but what we can do is say, okay, you know, by the time you exited the water 30 minutes later, did the, the reading, you had hardly no bubbles. So that was very successful because just because you have bubbles doesn't mean you're going to get bent. Just because you have a lot of bubbles doesn't mean you're going to get bent. But the more bubbles you have, the, the, the more likely or the more of a possible event of you getting decompression sickness. Um, there's also, you know, there's some uh, January, there's going to be a big update coming out to the app and we're going to take in uh, consideration exercise before and after and things like that. 
this awesome. is very this is a very important answer that you just gave and it's where i was trying to head to it seems to me that this is going to be more and more relevant or more and more useful to people that are seriously doing long deco dives because if you're doing recreational diving 130 feet above and basically not going out of the no deco profile yeah it's not really necessarily going to change much there's just not much to change well and that's what i was going to ask too is who is this device for? Like, I, I appreciate obviously yes. all the research and technology and the fact that we actually have something that is attempting to answer that or make us more custom. But the other thing I noticed is that not only you need the device, but you also need to learn how to use it. And I don't know if everyone that buys the device has to take the class or you have to buy it from a dealer that will train you on it. Like, I'll just show people this is the card that we got from... Doug, or from IANTD, Doug was our instructor. I don't think they can see it. It says O Dive Doppler Technician. That's the car that you get when you go through the training, right? Uh, certifying that you know how to use the device and the app and make the adjustments and all the stuff that Brandon is talking about. But I didn't get mine yet, by the way. I don't know if there's well, a reason. they probably holding it back for a reason. Well, I, I, I think I know. Well, all right. It's so, um, human so yeah, I, I, I agree. Versus. I think, you know, a, a, a I think it's kind of, you look back to when dive computers really became popular in the market. You know, we had the same kind of people saying, well, we've been using dive tables. It hasn't been a whole lot of changes. It's working. These the dive computers are more for more advanced divers. And, you know, I think it's going to be something else. It's a, it's going to revolutionize the dive industry and the fact of now we can start to see those and we can identify those problems and we can see the problems that people may be having before they became an issue and it, you know for the recreational diver it may be something that right this moment they can't really justify but you know as you as we progress the applications and the technology and, and things along those lines i think it's just like a dive computer was back in the 90s where when i first started diving where it was like well that's for fancy divers you know that kind well, of thing I think but although kind of although there are dive computer classes you can buy a dive computer and learn how to use it like by watching a YouTube yeah. video, right? Uh, how is this device sold? Yeah. That's one thing I didn't know. So right now, um, currently there's only a few of us in the United States carrying them. Um, there's no, you can't go to like Amazon and buy the device. Right. Um, because I think it's kind of like, we're trying to keep it so that people are properly trained on it. So they use it in the proper way. Because if you, you don't want to use it to make your dives more aggressive. You want to use your dive, use it to make your yes. dives safer. And if you're not properly trained on that, you may be getting results and being thinking then like, Oh, well, I, I'm, I don't make bubbles or I don't have bubbles. So I can yes. go push my limits. And we're trying to, oh, people that mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's going to be a problem. Well, so do you think that you're headed towards having this somehow automatically integrated into dive computers where you don't have to come out and take a reading at the end where it's happening real time while we're diving underwater. Is that ultimately where this whole migration is headed to? Yeah, I would say that's definitely where we're heading is to adapt algorithms because, you know, these algorithms, Bowman hasn't been really updated in years. I mean, it works, so it's great, but you know, we haven't really, you know, updated anything. And I think what you're starting to see is, you know, the Garmin's, the Scuba Pros, some of those computers are already starting to take your heart rate into consideration. You know, give an increased heart rate, you're going to on gas faster, blah, blah, blah. So what we're hoping is, is I think eventually you're going to see this technology as it becomes more readily available and, and to become into, and then maybe, maybe adjusting on the fly. I mean, there's some talks of a dive computer coming out for, by the same company as well too, but that's all, you know, hearsay at this point. But, you know, right now, I think, yeah, definitely uh, as time progresses, it's like technologies. I mean, if you look, I've been diving since the mid nineties, the, um, the technology is just leaps and bounds. You know, it's, it's crazy how much has changed. And, and, you know, maybe 20 years from now when I'm sitting here going back in my day, we did it, you know, <laughs> however, that, that definitely may be something that we see in the future. Yeah. Now, now that I think if you get to that point, obviously then, then that's really something because you know, people don't have to get trained on it and take readings and have that human risk of error or whatever. And things are sort of happening automatically. And then they don't have the risk of exactly what you said earlier, because I asked that question when we were talking with Doug is, am I going to keep pushing it? Well, let me change it. 
have a more aggressive profile and see how that does. But as I'm changing and I'm like, oh, I guess that wasn't good. I got bet. We don't want to keep pushing it in that direction. So if so having that automation would sort of prevent that where you only and let we, him go and, so and, aggressive. And then honestly, if you talk to a Doppler technician at Dan or something like that, the technology by us doing this, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever been involved with a bubble, uh, excuse me, a bubble study, but yeah, it's have. very up to interpretation. I mean, it's months and months and months and months of training to get somebody to be able to let's put something about that's listening to the, the bubbles whoosh, whoosh by in your blood system and be able to put a value to that versus this is now providing a standardized value across the, 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 the board. And then we're also now then we'll be able to take all that data and that data is going to be able to be used to develop new algorithms, better safety margins, you know, for Dan research projects, all that stuff. That's what that data is can now be used to, to improve divers as a whole. So you're kind of turning yourself into a little bit of a guinea pig in some aspects, but you're then helping. that, but you're helping the greater good. Yes. Yeah. Now, Underwater, Brandon, <clears throat> fish, not mammals, fish, they don't really bubble fish, not mammals. Just bear with me here. I want to, I want to, yeah, I just want to, I, I need to talk to you a little bit more in depth because I'm struggling with Gus and, and Doug is a little bit more open-minded, but he's a scientist. So I want to get to a point fish like an octopus or, or our fish swimming around, you know, picture like a grouper, yellow tail snapper. They don't bubble going up or down, moving around in the water column. No bubbles going on. No, Would you agree with have, that? Swim bladders can change in volume with air and stuff like that. But yeah, for the most part, no. Okay. So they don't. And I'm thinking that. Do you think the fact that I can have a very specific conversation with fish underwater That's, no just just hear me out has to do with the fact of why you know because i don't bubble at all you've detect we've tried it i've had other studies before and now i've done it twice with yours i knew why i told them i am what i am i i know that i am part from from the ocean i just I communicate with fish and now it sort of dawned on me and I told them going into this, I said, you guys ahead of the testing, you can do this. You can put it on me. We can do any dive you want. It's not going to detect any bubbles. And they're like, no, every single human bubbles. And I said, well, well I, yes, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I changed. I'm still, I've changed a long time ago. I'm not. What's your question? My question is, do you think that's why I can communicate better with fish? Because oh they God. they're detecting also that I'm not bubbling. It's loud when I hear Gus bubbling underwater like that. Do you think that has, or do you think that my button, the fact that I don't bubble is something else that I'm not a fish because I, I know I'm part what I am. That's why I wear my octopus shirt. Oh my so God. I hope that question makes sense. I mean, do you believe me now that I am what I am, that I'm not, not that I am a partly of the fish species. We're supposed to help the dive industry. The last five minutes were just gibberish. What are you talking about? Well, you know, that's, I mean, I don't bubble. I mean, you oh didn't understand God. why and Doug didn't understand why. And everybody's <laughs> wondering why. Well, that's why Brandon's here. He's going to, okay. So us. that, so there you go, go Brandon. I've so, asked the question in a very specific way, telling you what I know I am. So I can't speak to your uh, genetic makeup or your, your, your communication. I've actually never go with you. So I've never seen the communication aspects there. And I mean, I, the fact, I, you, the I fact you can see your gus bubbling underwater is a pretty impressive uh, fact. Wow. Now, that being said, the one thing that you've taken into consideration is when you guys did these, these tests, from what I understand, you were at Jenny Springs, right? Yes. And you had about how much deco ahead of you? I mean, we did. One of them was pretty long, wasn't 20 it? Minutes 18, 20, 20 minutes or 20 minutes, I think. Yeah. 20, 20 minutes. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. So you, you, you guys did your profile. So you were on gassing. And then you came back up and you were off gassing. But the entire time you were off gassing, okay, what's happening to those bubbles? Where are they going? Out of our body. Out of your body. So if ideally, it sounds to me like your algorithm and your everything was pretty good in the fact of the by the time it, you – left the bottom and started getting rid of that excess nitrogen in your system, you know, you open that Coke bottle nice and slow and all those bubbles went away. And by the time you got up, did the reading, you had no bubbles in your system. And then I think Gus and um, Dr. Ebersol still had some bubbles in their system. That's right. So, well, 
Yeah, they, you would. I, w- I mean, you but would that's still what, have bubbles because that's, that's, that, that's, that's my uh, uh, scientific, I guess, you know, biology background. And so are you, sa- so are you that saying, so are you saying that for some reason, my system, let's assume that I'm not part fish for a second, which I, I don't let's, think that's right, but everyone let's assume, assumes that. Let's assume that. Do you think my system, and I am trying to get to some specific stuff that you'll like us. Oh, is my system doing something different than their system is doing? Because we dove the exact same profile. We both, we all had 47 Ds. We all had pretty much within 30 seconds or a minute, the same deco. What is my body doing that their body wasn't doing? Well, I can just speak from a pure physiology standpoint. If you stand you next to Woody, or excuse me, you next to Gus and Dr. Eversall, there's, there's a little bit kind of a skew on the body type there you know same thing with me you know i've got the the dad bod going on down here so different physiology muscle fat that kind of stuff as well plays a factor into your bubbling as well too in your body um from what i understand you're also pretty you know um high metabolism guy like you can eat pretty much whatever you want and you know that's a fact used used to be able to do in high school but i can't do now kind of thing so that all plays a role into that. So it'd be interesting to find somebody else with your similar body type and then do the same kind of dives to see how close you guys are, or if it really is the fact that you're part octopus or no. Ethanol. Well, I think it is more of the cephalopod uh, species, oh but, my God. but I do think that's very important what you're saying. In all seriousness, you are bringing up a very important point. You are basically through your technology proving that it really does make a difference to be healthy, to be in good shape, to eat properly, to it's not just speculation anymore. It's we can show the actual bubbles are different in somebody's body. Who's just in better shape. So it matters and it can help your diving significantly. And that could possibly change people's, uh, that are really devoted divers that we're having that are, you know, getting bent or whatnot to be encouraged to do that. I like that. You said eating to, properly. To do that. That's when I think of you, I'm not going to eat, eat don't properly. Eat. I, mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I am. Di- I have a different situation going on. I know yes. that. I know what I am. I am what I am. And I've always known I'm part. People you know, don't octopus. know this, but like, I know that, but I'm talking about in normal, what you just said, matters and i know you're everybody's out there saying yeah so that's obvious but before it's a lot of speculation it's really being proven now that it matters when i've even shown the fact of your core body temperature i've had students that i do the yes. like decompression courses where they're like i'm not wearing a dry suit or i'm not wearing a wet suit i don't i'm not cold but then we do it we do a profile mm-hmm. with them do the O dive and it's showing they had a little bit more bubbles than they did if they would. And when they do the same profile, same everything, but dive dry or with a thicker wetsuit or something like that, because you know, your body's cold, it's going to retain gas and that's going to off gas differently. You know, yes. exercise after a dive is something we're taking in consideration, you know, all these factors is I think is what this O dive is going to start showing people. And again, we, you know, if you look back to the days of Navy dive tables, and I get, you know, people come, oh, well, I dive maybe dive tables. I never had a problem. I'm like, well, that's great. But you're also now pushing 50 and you got the dad bod going on or whatever. Maybe it's time to step that down a little bit. And I think that's where the, the O dive can be a huge benefit for recreational divers is to show, unfortunately, I'm not the guy I used to be when I was 20 years old anymore. I can't, you know, be up all night get the next morning, go dive for nine hours. And do, I mean, it would kill me now. So, you know, it's definitely, I think that's where the O dive is going to be great. The recreational market is for recreational divers is to show and help them kind of fine tune that to help with their own personal physiology and things like that. Not use it as a tool. I like how this. Aggressive we can make the profile, but again, how I can make sure that I'm safe and enjoying the sport as much as possible. That's what I now we're where I wanted to be. Now Good that stuff. everybody is a massive benefit of O dive, it does matter not to be cold. I, I always preach to my new dive students: absolutely, don't think because the water temperature is X that you don't need a full wetsuit. It matters. It it you you know it matters your physiology. It 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 really can enhance your overall dive experience. It keeps us 
and keeps you all safer, which in the end for me is super important because I love diving and I want to promote diving and I want everybody to love diving and I want it to grow. And this will ultimately do that. What you are doing will promote growth in the dive industry because I do think it's going to contribute to better diving habits, which ultimately just means people are going to dive safer and have a better dive experience. And for that, for where we finally got to in this moment right now, for all human divers out there, I applaud human what you just said. Yeah. If you're not, I mean, if you have other thing going on and there are, there are others of us, not many, but let's not, but I do think that matters greatly. And um, let's promote healthy diving through your technology. It's not, to say, wow, I can be more aggressive diver. In fact, it's the opposite for you me. It's the opposite. Like, what do I have to do to get more, yes. you know, uh, to get safer, right? And we added helium to our mix the, on day two, and I can see the results getting better. So well, and, uh, you know, it's just adding, a, you know, instead of doing a three minute stop, a five, we're not asking people to do these yes. super like absorbing it crazy thing. Just, instead right. of doing three minutes, do a five minute safety stop, and you can see a sure. huge decrease in the bubbles and a lot of people recreationally as well too awesome. and that's so, just excellent so brandon how can people find more about odi if, if they want to reach out to you or if they want to get trained and get one for themselves and this is not just for divers right like uh dive instructors as well uh even shops uh could have yeah. this thing on dive operators so yeah yeah i mean i use it for all of our students here um we use it it helps it's great for teaching decompression sickness it's great for you know uh, we do a lot of technical training here and everything else like that um, the device, you can go to my website, it's depthfinderscuba.com uh, and it's two S's in there. So depthfinders, then scuba.com, or you, I'm also on Facebook, Brandon Walters, LinkedIn, uh, you know, all those other places as well stuff. too. Yeah. Um, I can give the information to uh, Gus if they need it for the notes or whatever on this as well too. But yeah, feel free to reach out to me. I'm located here in Florida, uh, but I'm all, I mean, I live in Southwest Florida, but I'm up in Cape Country, the Pompano area. I'm in the Keys. I'm all over the, the area as well, too, um, as well as I know a few other dealers, you know, out west and stuff like that. So I can definitely help get them coordinated to somebody where they, they can do that. Come use the unit. If you come down here, you're ever in Florida, feel free to give me a call. We'll go do a dive, let you try it out. Um, oh, I can yeah. also, if you're interested and want to know more, um, we can do a, a abbreviated kind of training via um zoom or something along those lines to get people a little bit more updated onto the, the physics and the theory behind the uh, device. That's awesome. awesome. Brandon. And I would, <clears throat> I would like to um, take you up on that. I want to go on a dive, you know, like Pompano Jupiter area and let, you know, let's go under and have some conversations. Let's put you in a hundred percent nitrogen. Well, no, you, we'll know, see. you know what I mean? Let's have some we'll, we'll fill you with water and see how it does. So. But you yeah. know what I mean, right? Like we're going to go underwater and have some conversations. No, let's because I want to finish what I told you I am. We'll put you on like full on 100 percent nitrogen. We'll do a gradient factor of like, I don't know, three, three, whatever that is. Just tell Go me ahead. ahead of time which species you want to bring towards us and communicate. Outback with. Whales would be great off Pompano. So wow. That would be that would be awesome. So you know what we have coming, Brandon. All right. I will get the we'll get the rebreathers and we'll go play. So That's- we couldn't get we couldn't get a full answer of why Woody showed no bubbles. We are you well, know, no. making you know some hypotheses that we have to test uh, in the future. So on that terrible disappointment, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this episode <laughs> of Dive Talk. I appreciate your subscribing to the channel and liking this video and sharing it with other people that might be interested about decompression sickness and the o dive device and you know uh, overall just diving safer by the way i'm not joking and i'm not doing it just for this no episode. everyone knows you're you, not joking. i want you to people know you feel, believe this stuff that's i don't want you to be more distant from no. me because i just finally disclosed to you what i am that's, don't just embrace me and love me for okay what i uh, am just for who please. you are we love you for who you are that's all i ask I, i've known for a long time now you know all right thank you Ha, ha, ha.